All right, everybody, welcome to 15 and 15. Today we have Kristen Wixon. I'm turning it right over to you, Kristen. Hi, guys. Um, today we're going to talk about a few um, new additions to our programming at Lampson Library concerning information literacy. Uh, we have called our suite of programs uh, Ecolibrium, Teaching the Information Ecosystem. Um, some of the changes that we've we've made and the new things we're trying are really a response to things that we are observing in our work here in the library. Um, specifically, we've really come to <laughs> acknowledge that the set of topics that are traditionally thought of as the, the purview of librarians, things like databases or catalog searching or citations, um, these are really far from the whole story anymore. Um, and if we are really gonna adequately prepare our students to do research and to um, make informed decisions <laughs> throughout their lives, um, we have to talk about a, a much broader picture. Um, and the analogy that we've chosen to go with for that is uh, is an ecosystem. What we're looking at on this slide is a diagram put together um, in conjunction with a, a PSU student. Um, shout out to, to Brooke Flanagan for, for working on this. Um, we feel that the complexity of our information environment really, it's about as complex as, as an ecosystem in the natural world. Um, so sure, there exists the, the safety of the, the dock in the pond, right? The libraries, the databases, the subscriptions, they're all still there. Um, but we had to be open to a much broader um, pool of content. There's the whole river of online content that, that flows to us all. Uh, so it's not just databases, but it's also search engines. It's helping our students understand how, how those tools surface um, information. And you know, then we've got algorithms in play and the bias that goes along with those. All, all of the same sources still exist, of course, news and scholarly articles, and that's great. But now <laughs> there are other places of, in our environment like social media, um, places where you might en uh, encounter AI generated content of questionable value. Uh, we've got a whole scary corner of the world with uh, you know propaganda and and bots. We need we need our students to understand that potentially places in their environment are constructed in such a way that they, they aren't going to get the whole story or, or any, anything like a, a balanced view. Um, so this is this is the diagram we use to help us think about um, all, all the possibilities that we want to be having conversations with our students about. I really appreciate this quote from librarian Barbara Pfister. She encourages us um, when we're working with our students, we want them to, we, we don't want them to just trust an information source because I said so, or because their instructor said so, right? Don't think about what to trust, but think about why to trust. Um, so I think we need to be opening up our conversations to thinking about how different information products are created, how those processes either add value or not so much, you know, why Why does journalism that's produced in an organization that adheres to um, journalistic standards and ethics, why is that potentially more valuable? What is it about that process um, that is useful? What is it about the process of um, scientific or scholarly information um, being generated? What is it about that process that makes it trustworthy or not? Um, so I really quite like that, that quote. For the rest of the time in our 15 minutes, I'm going to go out to the library website and I'm going to share with you um, the websites, the information that's there so you know you can always go back and, and refer to it. Um, but we're going to see a lot of things that I think will maybe hope, hopefully, hopefully help us um, navigate some of those waters and, and start having some of these conversations with our students and including this in the, in the curriculum. Uh, so here's the website we are going to go to. You can visit it at any time. Um, it has all the information about all the different pieces of the Ecolibrium initiative. So whatever strikes your fancy today, um, you can get information here. I might have to go a little quickly through some of these since there are so many. But one thing we've really been thinking about is um, when is it useful to have a librarian do a one-shot session, come in and visit a class, talk about a topic. Um, and when is it preferable to incorporate something more thoroughly, to, to weave it throughout a course 
and really embedded in that course. Um, you can see the, the librarian sessions are obviously still on the table, but the instructor resources, this first program we're gonna look at, this is our way of um, helping folks uh, come up with ideas for integrating some of these topics in our own class. Um, so this instructor resources, it's a library. Right now it's got five topics in it, planning a research project, using databases, although Martha and I have some tweaks planned to this. Soon it will be more about search in general, uh, evaluation of things you, you find, uh, reading, as well as understanding what kind of information formats exist. So those are the topics we've got right now. This is definitely one area where we will continue to grow this resource. Um, doo -doo -doo, I'm going to pull one up. So one thing that I really like about this library is you can use it two ways. If you are a very kind of like self-serve person, you're, you're confident, uh, you just want some new ideas, you can open up any of these topics and, and there'll be a bunch of suggested activities. Uh, we're talking about maybe assignments, maybe things you do in class, maybe just small tweaks to a, an existing assignment that you could adopt. But if that's not you, and you're actually more interested in having the conversation about uh, how to approach the topic with someone else, every one of these topics has a get assistance um, button. And the, the person we've chosen, or in some cases, group of people, uh, are people who are eager to talk about these topics. Um, we can talk about what your specific concerns are. We can talk about um, activities maybe that we've done and how they went. Um, so it can just be more, more of a conversation uh, to get you started. Uh, every one of these topics has like a little summary at the top, like what's the, what's the issue we're trying to get at? Um, suggested activities, those are the, the pieces you might choose to incorporate into your, your class. Um, you know, we can even open them up. There's a lot of really, um, I think they're pretty ro robust information in here. So if you did want to do them on your own, we've got, we've got steps, we've got things to think about for each one of these, these activities. The faculty support section, these are just kind of like smaller little nuggets to think about that might help um, in smaller ways might help you change your thinking or help you incorporate these ideas into the into the class. Um, so know that this library is here as well um, and either use it on your own or, or do remember that um, there are a bunch of people over here in the library and learning commons who would be happy, happy to talk to you about these topics. Um, going back to our main landing page here. The next thing on our list is the, the library led sessions. I'm not gonna click through to that. I think a lot of us understand how those work, but I will invite you um, to think about all the topics that we see in this diagram. Um, sure, we all know the librarians will come and talk about search terms or databases, uh, but if you see another topic in this ecosystem that you want to address and you maybe want to partner with a librarian to do it. We, we are open to um, developing new kinds of sessions to address these. So th these are everything on here is something I'm thinking about. I know a bunch of these are things uh, collab folks are thinking about too. So get in touch if you're interested in, in a session and we'll, we'll get the right people in the room to come up with a way um, to approach that. Research clinics. Okay, this is another new piece that I am really excited about. If you uh, have any sort of research component in your class, any sort of substantial research assignment, um, and you want to nudge your students towards potentially um, using the reference services at the library, um, assigning a research clinic might be the thing for you. Uh, we noticed uh, even after the pandemic was over <laughs> um, that our numbers at the reference desk where we provide research support for students, they weren't, they still weren't where they were before that started. Um, so this is a, a reaction to that where we are um, helping introduce students to the kinds of interactions and the kinds of support that librarians can provide. Uh, so how it works, if you wanna assign a clinic, um, you tell your students to sign up. We have a whole schedule of clinics that happen at different times on different days. So this is something students do outside of the regular class time. 
So they sign up for a time that works for them. They come in, um, they're with a, a mix of students from a bunch of classes and they, um, it's a little bit of a social event. So we have some icebreakers and we have some snacks. Most of the time is dedicated research time. Um, and, and in that hour or so that we have dedicated research time, a librarian will go around to every student in the clinic and have that five to 10 minute research consultation. So really the, the kind of interaction they would have if they were still coming to the reference desk more frequently. Um, so they'll get that help on whatever their specific problems are, whatever their specific challenges are, because everybody struggles in different ways and every research topic is different. Um, and librarians, I mean, frankly, we have a lot of experience helping with random questions. And sometimes there's advice that is very helpful to an individual student that we wouldn't ordinarily share in say a session with a whole class. So it really lets us like personalize the support um, and help, help students understand what it is that we do for them at the library. We are realistic. We do not think that anybody is going to just show up to these clinics. So if you want your students to do this, we ask that you assign it like as an assignment in your class. Um, and because <laughs> that you then need to ch check if they've done it, we've developed an exit ticket. So everybody who goes to uh, a research clinic will leave with this ticket. Um, so on one side, they write about what it is they worked on, what they're going to do next. And on the other side, we stamp it. So you know that they were here. Um, that's what it looks like. Super cute. Brooke Flanagan designed these as well. Thank you, Brooke. Um, and what else do I want to say? Oh, if you are interested in using the research clinics, please let me know because we are scheduling, um, we want to make sure we schedule enough clinics so there's enough seats for everybody who wants to attend. So I need to know who's, who's going to attend. Um, if you ever need to, to chat more about this, if you have, uh, Further questions, there are some FAQs on this page, but don't hesitate to reach out to me and we can chat. All right, next up are student challenges. These are some new kind of off the shelf um, modules that students can do. This is probably the area where it's in the earliest phase of development. So we've only got two. I know they're not on the most exciting topics, um, definitely watch this space. And I think we are going to have other challenges here related to some of those other topics that we saw in the ecosystem diagram. Um, but these are all designed to work over the course of a week. So you could assign these to your students and there's a small task related to the topic that they do each day. Um, so we thought the, the repetition was maybe good, helping students revisit the topic to, to get really grounded in it. Um, and there is one there, the little video to watch, right? And then there's a thing they actually do at the end of each day. They add it to a worksheet and they can submit that worksheet to you again, if you wanted to use this as an assignment. Um, so, I mean, if you, yep, databases are useful, search terms are useful, go ahead and use these now, but definitely keep an eye out here because we're gonna, we've got more in mind, Martha and I working on maybe some AI challenge um, coming up. Uh, last but certainly not least, we have tweaked our policy around using the library classroom, Lampson 102. That's on the main level. Probably a bunch of you have seen it. It's a really nice space. Um, but in order to um, fit in with our ideas about encouraging instructors to weave these topics into their courses, we want you to be able to come to the library and have those conversations too, even if that means even if you're not inviting a librarian into your session, we want you to be able to use that space. Um, so we're asking maybe not more than two class periods per course per semester, um, but up to that, just get in touch with me. I can book the room for you. Um, so if you want to have a workshop day and you want the students to be able to access materials, that is um, a good use of that. Or, or even if you just want to mix it up a new space where you want to talk about some of these other these other topics um, as we think more broadly about our information ecosystem. Know that that is there. Awesome, I made it under 15 minutes. I just wanna point out that the handout that goes along with this is kind of a summary of these five programs, but it's a, a when would I use this? You know, When would I use research clinics? When would I use 
um, the instructor resources. Um, so definitely take a look at that and uh, don't be a stranger, get in touch if you have any questions. All right, I'll stop recording and folks can hang out for a minute.